And it's often said by wise men that numbers don't matter. That it is not, we don't want the greatest number of men, but we want quality. And in modern times, we no longer speak about numbers don't matter, but you find also in families that they say in families that when that the number of, of minutes that a mother spends with a child, the number of children that one has, not so important, but rather it is the quality. And then we speak about time. And they always speak about that, they, that we must have, nowadays the mommy works and the daddy works and everybody is away from home and everybody is out, this kid's off at soccer practice and that one's here, the other one's there. And they say, well, the number of time doesn't matter. What matters is quality time. We've got to have quality time. And today we have, and it's within the octave of the, of the Feast of Corpus Christi, the great feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to celebrate the great gift that God has given to us. We see what is in the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And St. Gregory the Great talks about it as well. He says, We call you shepherds, you priests of God. You are called shepherds. But what is the first duty of a shepherd? His duty is to increase the flock. So if you meet a shepherd, and the shepherd has 25 sheep when he's 20 years old, you come back when he's 60, and he still has 25 sheep. You say, wow, he's a very good shepherd. He kept those same 25 sheep. So he says, very great, says, no, he's not a good shepherd. Well, the good shepherd is the one that started with 25 sheep, and you come back in 25 years, and he has 25,000 sheep. That's a good shepherd. And so that oftentimes, many times in life, we human beings speak all that matters is the quality and not the quantity. And yet, when we look at our Lord Jesus Christ, what do we hear about him? When we look at God, what does he say? It says in the book of Proverbs, I am a selfish God. I have made all things for myself. He didn't make most everything for himself. He made everything. The stars are made for his glory, and there are billions of stars, trillions of stars. He made the plants for his glory, and there's innumerable plants. And the same with all things that he made. All have innumerability to them. And then also, what did he say to his apostles about numbers? On the day in which he died, or not the day he died, but the day in which he ascended into heaven, he said to his apostles, there were only 12 apostles at the time, and there were, there were only a few thousand people, about 3,000 people there at the time of the day of the resurrection. And he said to his 12 apostles and the 72 disciples, going therefore, teach ye all nations. You go to all the nations. I don't want the good nations, stay away from the bad nations, but go to all the nations. Then he said, preach the gospel to every single creature. I want every creature to hear the gospel. I want every single person, every man, woman, and child, and I want you to go out to, to them all. And then also our Lord, on Holy Thursday night, he said, uh, he said also concerning numbers, he said on Holy Thursday night before he went to his death, Lord, I thank thee that thou hast saved all of my children and then also St. John, Saint, Saint, Saint John says that he loved them, each and every one, and he loved them all unto the end. So numbers are important. And we see that in the Gospel today. That a man, our Lord God the Father, made a heavenly feast. And then when we hear about the heavenly feast, it stands for heaven. In heaven, God is always there. And everyone that is in heaven knows him. Everyone that is in heaven loves him. Everyone in heaven serves him and is always good to him. He is always with those whom he loves and they always love him. And there is no one more satisfying to God than the Father with the Son and the Son with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost and the Father and the Son and this wonderful community they have which is called circumcision. They are the most beautiful community. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They don't need anything out of that community. And then there's a modern notion of love. What is a modern notion of love? A young man falls in love with a young woman and they are so madly in love and they love each other so much that they don't need the rest of the world and they don't need anything else. In fact, other things are a distraction to them. They only know and love each other and they don't want to increase. But when God created marriage, what did he say? Adam, you must love Eve. Eve, you must love Adam. But what are you going to do? Go out and people the earth. 
and people the entire earth. And when, and when Noah walked off of the flood, off of the ark, what did he tell him to do? He said, increase and multiply. Just like I told Adam, your great-grandfather, to increase and multiply. I tell you to increase and multiply and people the earth. And then he founded a church. He founded a church 2,000 years ago. And what would we expect to hear from him? Because what our Lord Jesus Christ said on the sixth and Thursday was, going therefore, teach ye all nations. Bring them my life. Bring them my love. Bring them my faith. And people the earth with saints. People the earth with, with men and, and women and children, with priests and laity, with monks and nuns, with every type of individual, child and adults, who all know and love and serve me. And people the earth, I want them to know and love and serve me in every corner of the go. And so numbers are a very important part of our holy church. Now how many Christs are there? There is only one Christ. He has only one body, only one blood, one soul, one divinity. And yet, what did he do with that body, blood, and soul, and divinity? He put it in every tabernacle throughout the world. He wants it to be received, his body, and blood, and soul, and divinity received by every single individual. So therefore, numbers matter. And our Lord came to the heavenly wedding feast, and he prepared a great feast. What was in the heart of him? St. John talks about it. There's something about God that he loves us. And he wants to prepare a feast for us. He didn't want to be in heaven by himself. He wants heaven to be filled. He wants the guests to all be in heaven. Therefore he invited the Jews, but the Jews, most of them, did not want to come. And he invited all other, many others to the feast, but they don't want to come. Now he's inviting the traditional Catholics to the feast, but they don't want to come. He's inviting the modern Catholics to the feast, but they don't want to come. Does our Lord say, all right, I'll just take those that love me and I'll go on my feast. And let those that don't love me, let them stay outside. But what did he say to his servants? Master, those who love you, they don't want to be at the feast. So what do we do? Well, just take the ones that are willing to come and we'll have a bigger feast. There'll be more for us. No. What did God say? Go out into the highways and the hedges. Go to the very edges of the earth. Now, this is the effect of the Blessed Sacrament. And it is the effect of, the, of God inside of us, and there cannot be any other effect. Because God is everywhere. God created all things, and God made all things for His glory. So what is the proof that God is in me? If God is in me, I must love all things. If God is in me, I have to want all things to be brought to him. And that is why, for instance, if we're going to be a soldier of God, when you confer the sacrament of confirmation, the sacrament of confirmation, you go up in front of the bishop and he gives you a slap, you get a slap upon your cheek, and you will be a warrior to defend the army of God, to defend the kingdom of God. But remember, we are not in the defense system. The great American general George S. Patton said, the best way to defend is to attack. We don't defend walls. We don't defend our city. We go out to conquer the whole world. That's what great generals do. Some generals can hold an army, hold a city. They can guard a citadel. They can protect something. But that's what our armies are not for that. Armies are to conquer the neighboring country. Armies are to spread to the king, to spread your kingdom to the end of the earth. That's what armies are for. And our army is the army of armies. The greatest of all armies. So when you become a soldier in the army of our Lord Jesus Christ, what are you here for? Why are you a soldier? Not just to defend the faith. Not just to say, I believe in Jesus. Not just to let the devil not take over. The prince of this world is a thief. Satan is the prince of this world. The prince of this world is a usurper. And we will remove the thief. And what do you do? How do you get rid of a thief? A thief steals something. What do you do? You take it back. And then you take him and you drive him into prison. The usurper is thrown out of power. And his take things are taken from him. And what did our Lord also say about a soldier? What did he say? He said, when a man is strong, he defends what he has. This is not us. Until a man stronger than him comes and takes what he has. So the man that's stronger has all the things he has, plus everybody else's stuff. This is why it's a teaching of our Holy Church. 
all Catholics desire that every man, woman, and child upon the earth receives Jesus Christ. And every man, woman, and child on the earth adores God in three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He wants every single one, every creature to hear the gospel. He wants all things to be believed and taught that Christ taught us. He wants the entire nations, every nation, to follow Christ. There is inside of the Catholic a desire built to bring Christ to every nation, every people, every individual, everywhere in the world. And this is a natural effect of the Blessed Sacrament. Our Lord Jesus Christ is one body, and yet He will be many hosts, countless hosts throughout the whole world. So we want to carry that one body every single place. We cannot just simply say, I'm going to keep the Holy Eucharist. I'm going to keep my faith. I'm going to protect my family. I'm going to protect myself and the things around me. No, we desire the whole world to be conquered. Right now, that the world hates God and the world is against God. What do we want? We want that world to be turned back to God. That world to go back to no love and servant. That is what we want. And St. the Great says, the Good Shepherd always is striving to increase the flock. To increase the flock. And what did that father say? We went out and we got, we got people for the feast. We went to the highway, we went to the hedges, we got all the beggars, we brought them in. And still there is room. And did the father say, you did a good job. We only had 20 to the feast, now we got 5,000. You did a good job. Now what did he say? Get out there. What do you mean you've only got 5,000? Get out there and get the everyone you can, for the feast must be filled. And the feast will be filled. And then when the feast is filled, what happens? God the Father walks in. We see in the other parable that completes this one. He walks in the wedding feast to look at the guests. God came to look at the guests. And what did he say many, many times? You, you minister to, to me in this life, but when you come to heaven, I will minister to you. What does minister mean? It means he will feed us. He will set the table and he will feed us Right now, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, Christ is going to feed us. We come to the table, and He feeds us. It is the priest, who is another Christ, carries the bread, the body and blood and the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, the real body and blood of Christ, to feed us upon our tongues. And He has come to be our food. He wants us to come in His presence, not so that we can serve Him, but that He can minister to us. And remember also, in this very life, what happens? Why do I have air to breathe right now? Why am I not freezing to death? Why am I not burning to death? Because God has put the sun exactly where it needs to be, so that I might be warm, but I might not burn, that I might not freeze. He has made the air around me, and how much air? Infinite amount of air, way more than what I need. He has provided me my warmth, He has provided me my health, He has provided me the dirt that is beneath my feet. And there, this same God, when He comes to bring us His faith, He's going to provide it for all of us, more than what we need. So remember, numbers do matter. We do want to increase the flock of Christ. We want to fill the kingdom of heaven. And this is why we are made soldiers in the sacrament of confirmation. It is why Christ takes the blessed sacrament and brings it everywhere in the world. So therefore, let us get the spirit of the Holy Eucharist inside of us and desire that all men know, love, and serve and receive God. Let us bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.